Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, I'm very proud to be opening one of Macintosh's integrated amplifiers, the MA6700. This 200 watt Macintosh amp is absolutely superb and I'm very, very proud to have this factory sealed unit ready for us to do an unboxing video today. Okay, so all Macintosh stuff comes double box. This very large, heavy box um, is factory sealed with tape, big sturdy box with staples, and on um, four corners, the model and serial number. Opening it is very straightforward, where a craft knife is used to cut the factory tape. So if I lift this up for you, so that we can have a look, you'll see the additional level of packaging that is added to these products and the amplifier box that's inside. Because this is very heavy, do the classic thing, which is lift the box off the product, not the product out of the box. Um, the packaging itself is actually very heavy. The sturdy cardboard is thick and the box itself probably weighs a couple of kilos. As we look at this, the easiest is to roll it up onto its edge and remove the foam innards. Probably rolling it forward, we can grab the other two and get rid of them. The inner box, again, you'll see the efforts that I'm making here. This beautiful product is extremely heavy. Uh, there's three auto, well, two out auto former output transformers and a big power supply on board. The next box is relatively smaller and starts to give you an indication of the size of the product that's inside. Again, factory seals along the edges and along the front with a flat here. Opening the second box, again, very, very straightforward. And a cut along the front edge. Opening this flat reveals the attention to detail that Macintosh have with their packaging. Um, a simple brown protective layer of cardboard, Macintosh MA6700 user manual, a, a network or RJ45 um, socket for an external AM aerial, the AM aerial. Uh, Macintosh's brand new remote control, uh, power cord, uh, traditional IEC, and a Macintosh uh, tool for tightening up the binding posts at the rear. At this point it doesn't get any easier. The packaging is beautiful, but with the amplifier being very heavy, some of the next steps are quite difficult. You'll see that I'm now sliding the product. You'll see why. Oh, there we go. Batteries for the right. If we move this awkwardly because of its weight, the packaging... As we discard that, we reveal why. And very heavy, but as we roll this over, We'll actually see that the base of this is uh, 5 mil MDF physically screwed into the amplifier itself. So at this point, to remove the base and this 5 mil MDF and the big screws, I'm going to use a power drill. The process is relatively easy. They have to be a little bit more careful in the factory than putting them on, so we can be pretty rough removing them. So the base, protective base, is now easy to remove, revealing some pre-determined holes, which some are used for this model, and some protective little cups that marry up with the holes where the screws have been. You'll even see in the packaging this sort of cutaway where the front edge of the amplifier sits to better protect it. So again, this is very heavy, so I'm carefully rolling it over. and sort of loosening the bag so that I can easily prep it for the next step. The bag itself is sealed with some cello tape and it's very easy to nick that and 
start quietly and carefully getting this bag off. We're starting to see this amplifier for the first time and rolling it carefully onto its edge enables me to take the last of the bag off. Um, there is a protective bag in there with desiccant, moisture reduction. We'll get rid of that one. Okay, so spinning this around and having a look at this for the first time. The Macintosh is a beautiful style, very, very elegant, with a very simple front. There is um, input control, which also uh, allows selection and setup. Uh, pushing and holding gets into a setup menu, for example. The same with the volume control. It's not just a rotary encoder for volume, it allows us to manipulate some of the internal features. Looking at the front, the classic VU meters from Macintosh are apparent. Um, the illum rear illumination of a glass front panel is again classic and probably iconic for Macintosh. Um, big display, lots of information there if required, IR sensor. Um, the headphone output is excellent and it gives the buttons on the front for the two uh, switchable outputs at the rear. You've got a tone bypass button and a mute button there as well along with the standby. So very very simple and elegant. Main dials of course are input and volume and with the features buried within the operating system the front panel is nice and simple and elegant. If I lean this forward for a moment you'll have a look at why the amplifier is so physically heavy. This unit has a very large toroidal, sorry, very large power supply giving its, its amplification stage all of the control that it needs and then the two auto former output transformers that are iconic or at least classic to Macintosh's design. The um, power consumption, total harmonic distortion and other readings are clearly printed on the front of the unit. Spinning it around and having a look at the size side you will see the heat sinks, um, you can actually look in and see the main amplification chipsets and spinning it around we see the rear of the unit. There is a module here for um, the tuner module. Uh, that is an aftermarket accessory that you can buy from Macintosh and we can fit or an end user can as well. Uh, you've got the right terminals of outputs which are duplicated in some respect because you have one negative and then three outputs, uh, three positive outputs depending on whether or not you have a two, four or 8 ohm load that is emulated over the other side of the amplifier with its left output. The next series of uh, inputs and outputs in the middle of the amplifier relate to the digital side of things with coax and optical along with an asynchronous USB. The 3.5mm connections are for IR, data and other control which enables one remote to control a series of Macintosh pieces or this Macintosh amplifier turn on the power for a CD player, music server or additional power amplifier. The inputs and outputs along the, the rear are simple with traditional record outputs and line outs as well as the ability to remove the bridging clips for the addition of a, a power amplification or using this as a preamp. There are labelled inputs for server DVD, CD and auxiliary along with a second one for CD to allow you to uh, add any number of different analog devices. There's an excellent moving coil and moving magnet phono stage and a, a good quality binding post for a turntable ground loop. This model also has a single set of balanced inputs most commonly used for a high-end CD player. So there we have it, Macintosh's MA6700 unboxing video here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. <laughs>